Okay, I'm going to start a series uh, about bug out vehicles. Uh, everybody's got their favorite uh, bug out machine, whether it be uh, a car, an SUV, a truck. Uh, this is an H3 Hummer. It's the downsize Hummer. It's not the H1 or H2, the big uh, military variants. These are great. They've got a little uh, 3.7 liter Vortec engine. It's a General Motors product. So, um, you know, it's a five-cylinder, which a lot of people consider a little odd. I happen to like it because it's uh, the power-to-weight ratio is good. And it's pretty good fuel economy. It's a, it's a robust little engine with a good track record. Uh, if this is your front-up bug-out vehicle, though, and you lose a water pump like I did, uh, you're shut down and not going anywhere. Uh, I've already got the uh, new water pump installed. Um, since I was in there, I decided to go ahead and replace the, uh, the idler. The bearings are just beginning to go bad in it, and uh, all this stuff is basically Taiwanese, and uh, the quality's not that great. It's a GM product. That tells you a lot. Maybe, uh, maybe a step up from Ford, depending on who you talk to. So we're going back in with a replacement, a new part. Uh, as I say, uh, most of these are offshore products. Lifespan, questionable. If you were really going to do this right, you'd probably put Tempkin bearings in, press them out, put the real thing in there. I decided to leave the, uh, the alternator in. Uh, it, it sounds good, the bearings seem to be good in it. Also the uh, tension idler over here appears to be good. I did want to caution you though, if you ever have an opportunity to change the water pump on one of these H3s, uh, do not, I repeat, do not over torque these bolts seven foot-pounds, if you can believe that. That's roughly um, 89 to 90 inch-pounds. If you uh, cinch that down like uh, Joe Average would, not only will it uh, possibly warp and break the parts, strip the threads, but you'll probably end up with a nasty coolant leak. Uh, this particular machine uses Dex Cool. Uh, there are mixed opinions with respect to that as a coolant. Some people like to flush their system and go with something standard, but uh, I've had no problems with it. Uh, this was a good opportunity to go in and freshen everything at the front. New belt. Got to go through and change the plugs. Um, there are a lot of things that could be done with this particular H3 that would make it a lot more roadworthy and rugged. Uh, in a later um, video, I'm going to talk more about how to EMP harden it. Uh, this is the electronic module back here. Uh, there's a device called a transorber. It's basically a Zener type device that's an avalanche um, zinner. So uh, if an EMP, if somebody flash bangs us with one, uh, it will automatically snub, it will automatically take to ground any high voltage transients. Now what's great about the vehicles, the wire runs, runs aren't really very long. So, um, you know, it's not like a high voltage transmission line uh, where there could be millions of volts induced. And chances are we're on the order of thousands of volts and it's pretty easy to snub those. So I'll go into that in a later uh, video about how to actually EMP harden your vehicle. Some are easier to do than others, but just because it's late model doesn't mean you'd be dead beside the road. Um, as I say, if they uh, do some kind of a high altitude EMP strike. Uh, I'm going to be putting this back together now. I did want, want to warn you about that uh, water pump not over tightening those. Another nice hack is uh, when your fan clutch comes up, it can sure hit your radiator. So I used a piece of aluminum here to protect that so that you wouldn't end up, I wouldn't end up, with a scarfed up radiator. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and stick this back together.